in Australia's Northern Territory, about 268 miles southeast of its capital city of Darwin, lies the remote town of Larimer. Officially established in 1940 and consisting today of just 10 residents, the town has no police station, no mobile phone reception, no CCTV, and one pub. It is one of the most isolated towns in the territory. It is also the location of one of Australia's most enduring mysteries, the disappearance of its resident, Paddy Moriarty, and his dog, Kelly. Paddy Moriarty was born on March 30th, 1947, in the village of Croom, County Limerick, Ireland. He was likely conceived out of wedlock, and according to The Australian, was possibly raised as a foster child. At the age of 18, he emigrated to Australia, and later worked as a station hand, ringer, and grader driver. In 2008, he moved to Larimer, and purchased a vacant service station two years later for $30,000. Paddy was last seen on December 16th, 2017. By then, he was a regular fixture at the Larimer Hotel, which featured a crocodile named Sneaky Sam in a pool out back, as well as what is described as a makeshift zoo containing dozens of different birds. Paddy was an employee at the hotel at the time of his disappearance, telling engaging, colorful tales to tourists at the bar. He reportedly drank his typical eight to 10 beers that evening before climbing onto his quad bike. His faithful dog, Kelly, hopped up next to him, and they set off to make the 800 meter journey back home. The last person to see Paddy and Kelly was a tourist who offered the canine some chicken for dinner. When Paddy didn't report for work the next day, Locals began to suspect that he'd had an accident, been bitten by a snake, or fallen into a sinkhole. All of these were common in the remote Australian outback. Police were called to the town several days later, and their first course of action was to investigate the 70-year-old's home. Though there was no sign of Paddy or Kelly, they found his two hats, keys, bank card, medication, and a plate of food that was ready to be consumed. Furthermore, his quad bike was out the front. Coroner Greg Cavana later noted that Paddy was bald and self-conscious about the shape of his head. He would always go out with a hat on. Examining the evidence as part of a 2022 inquest, Cavana reported, it appeared that in the midst of a meal preparation, something unexpected happened, but not such that he did not have time to close the door and put the mat and Bessa block in place. Law enforcement also believed that if Paddy had met with an accident or wandered off, they would be able to find Kelly. Because the canine was missing though, they suspected that someone had taken both Paddy and his dog. Incredibly, in a town of 12 people, nobody had seen a thing. With no surveillance footage and no physical evidence, investigators struggled to figure out how a man and his dog could disappear in such a minuscule community. Authorities combed the area on foot and by car, even bringing in helicopters at one point. They searched through caverns, dumps, and the dam, and interviewed all the remaining residents of Larimer, but found no leads. One of the most notable residents of the town is Fran Hodgetts, who ran a tea house and pie shop on the Sturt Highway. Paddy lived opposite the tea house and had known Hodgetts for three decades. Though the two were initially on good terms, all that changed when Hodgetts divorced her husband and Paddy took his side during the split. Hodgetts would later accuse the 70-year-old of stealing her property, threatening her customers, and even killing her plants. In 2016, they signed a court-ordered mediation letter, agreeing to be polite and limit their interactions with one another but the peace didn't last, and the two became embroiled in more fallouts in the following months when Hodgett hired Owen Laurie as a gardener. Words exchanged between Laurie and Paddy included more allegations of plant murder. 
just days before Paddy vanished, he reportedly fought with Laurie. According to reports, Laurie had told Paddy, you need to shut that effing dog up or I'll shut it for you. To which Paddy replied, shut your mouth or I'll take your knees out from under you. A witness, the hotel barman, advised Paddy to be careful. He simply replied, it's all good, I've got a baseball bat. Still, Laurie denied knowing what became of the 70-year-old after he went missing. He stated that he never saw Paddy come home that night, despite being in a phone box with a clear view when the elderly man arrived home. Laurie argued he was too old to hurt someone. He was 71 and stated, I'd break all my bloody bones. I have osteoporosis. Hodgetts, meanwhile, denied rumors that she had killed Paddy, chopped up his corpse and put it in her famous pies. Investigators made sure to thoroughly check her incinerator and septic tank, but found no evidence of Paddy or Kelly. Hodgetts told police that though she'd talked about killing the 70-year-old, she'd only been joking. Her ex-husband, Bill, noted that he'd had a beer with Paddy on the night he vanished, and he was going to let him borrow his lawnmower, but he never showed up to collect it. When asked by the media what he thinks happened to Paddy, he stated, I haven't got a clue, but whoever done it, they done a bloody good job of it. In 2021, police offered a $250,000 reward for information that would help solve the case, though it brought in no new leads. In the spring of 2022, an inquest was held where coroner Greg Cavana stated his belief that both Paddy and Kelly had died sometime on the night of their disappearance. In my opinion, he said, Paddy and his dog were killed in the context of, and likely due to, the ongoing feud he had with his nearest neighbor. Kavana suggested that upon coming home, Paddy began sorting out food for both he and Kelly, and that the two stepped outside at some point during the evening. Kavana continued, there is no evidence as to where he went. However, in my view, it's likely that the new plants at Fran's place were of some attraction to him. The inquest also heard eight audio recordings, featuring a man identified as Owen Laurie singing and talking about the killing. The recordings had been made in secret by the police. One recording features a man's voice saying, effing killed Paddy, hit him on the head, smacked him on the effing nostrils with my claw hammer, and I killerated old Paddy. I struck him on the effing head and killerated the bastard, basherated him. In another, the same man says, well, they didn't effing find the hammer, well, they can't get me for anything, and you gotta find out who effing done it, mate. That's if you don't find the effing body to find out who done it. I can tell you, you are not finding out. I tell you effing repeatedly, you are not finding out. You are not finding out. The recordings had been gathered by police in the six months after the disappearance and had been recorded in Laurie's own home. Laurie, though, disputed that the voice on the tape was his. He claimed that it wasn't and stated again that he knew nothing of Paddy's disappearance. He then determined that he should stay silent so that nothing he said could be misconstrued or incriminate him. It also emerged at the inquest that two other allegations had been regarding Paddy's disappearance. One of them came from an individual named Wayne Ledwich, who claimed that in 2017, he had overheard a conversation between his friend, Brian Roberts, who is now deceased, and Fran Hodgetts. He alleged that Hodgetts had offered Roberts $10,000 to get rid of Paddy. Hodgetts, who spent time in Melbourne while receiving cancer treatment, denied that any such conversation took place and denied knowing Roberts, stating, I never, ever, ever paid anyone to bump Paddy off. I swear on my mother and father's grave. I don't know him and I never said that. Notably, Hodgetts struggled to explain to investigators how $30,000 of cash she kept in a freezer had decreased to 7,000 by the time they found it, leading to some suspicions that she had paid somebody off. Meanwhile, a truck driver named Michael Panqui told the court that he believed Roberts had been involved with another death that had occurred back in 2001. However, investigators have been unable to find corroborating evidence for the claim. In 2005, another man was arrested and convicted of the 2001 murder. To this day, the remains of Paddy and Kelly have never been found. There has been no further progress in the case and it's unclear what became of the two on the night of their disappearance. 
Fran Hodgett's return to Larimer in late 2022, following her cancer treatment. Her grandson, Brent Celia, currently runs her tea house and has spoken about the way his grandmother was treated following the disappearance. Speaking with ABC News, he stated, "'There's been a world of abuse as people drive past the house. Also phone calls. People have called her and said stuff to her. There's been vandalism all over the shop. People have painted over signs that I repainted over and rubbish gets thrown and stuff goes missing from under the house. He noted that much of the mistreatment came from outsiders, not Larimer residents. The way she has to live now and seclude herself is making her feel lonely and depressed and emotionally in a bad way. Around this same time, the Northern Territory public trustee announced that it intended to administer Paddy's estate, meaning it could be sold off. Celia said, if it gets sold and fixed up, then it won't be that place anymore. Since Paddy's disappearance, two residents have died. Barry Sharp, the owner of the pub, and Bill Hodgetts, Fran's ex-husband. Fran, for her part, has stated that Larimer is a better place without Paddy, but continues to insist that she is not responsible for his disappearance. She has, though, admitted to having her own suspicions about Owen Laurie, who has never been charged with Paddy's murder due to a lack of evidence, most notably a lack of a body. She claimed that his behavior following the disappearance led her to sack him as her gardener. Hodgetts told Digital Spy, I don't like to blame somebody for something they didn't do, but I was worried because Owen said to me, something's going to happen. Also, when they were searching across the road, he said to me, I thought they came for me. I didn't say nothing to him, but I thought, oh my God, why would he say that? I just put two and two together, and that's why I sacked him and told him to go. Hodgetts told the Washington Post that she wasn't sorry Paddy was gone and that his disappearance had done some good for the town, stating, well, it's put Larimer on the map, hasn't it? And there you have the facts. Please leave a comment down below with your own thoughts and speculations, and remember to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching. Stay alert, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.